Well, pretty sure I suck. Finally got out in nature. Of course, I only got like a couple hours before the sun goes down because there's no sun in New York. So if you're expecting the usual, like, well, I don't think it's usual anymore, but if you're looking for an uplifting ray of sunshine, hope, you know, it's all gonna be okay fucking video, this ain't it. As many of you know, I've struggled with sobriety throughout my life. And uh, recently, you know, I, I was doing good. I was in the two drink limit, then I upped it to three drinks, and some would argue that's where I fucked up right there, including myself. Um, you know, I, I, I was doing okay. But lately, my mindset has been fucked. To the point where it's easier to say fuck it. Like, when you're addicted to something, whether it's shitty foods, you know, alcohol or fentanyl, uh, you tend to rationalize it in any way possible. And the most common rationalization, one that I've used, is... Fuck it, everything sucks and you're gonna die anyway. I'm straying off the beaten path here. Better check my shit. I'm not gonna be able to do the full loop before they lock the gate. Even nature's communist, apparently. Oh yeah, rationalization. We tend to rationalize it. And it's a stupid rationalization, because basically you're increasing the odds that you're going to have a shitty life. You're increasing the odds that you're going to fucking die. Um, you know, all in the name of getting that extra dopamine. Let's see if I can do a little bit of hiking today. I really gotta get out to the Adirondacks where there's less motherfuckers. So, you know, it's a dumb rationalization that ultimately le could lead to a path of self-destruction that precludes, you know, all the other dumb shit that can take us out in life. You know, that whole you gotta die of something, live for the now attitude does have that fatal, often fatal flaw. And I'm aware of it. But that doesn't mean I ain't fucking human and don't have my moments of fuck it. I mean, and let's face it, this is the year of fuck it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's quite easy to be like, you know, look at society, look at all the freedoms that we're losing and all the shitty lifestyle changes we're making and just the general attitude of at least half of society if not more um, can lead you to be like well might as well go out that way you know and I'm I would say that uh, I'm <laughs> I'm part way through my own downfall at this point between quitting keto and now falling off the alcohol wagon. So just to kind of give you an overview of how I managed to fuck this up. Um, last weekend I went to a friend's birthday, you know, to celebrate. Um, but however, my birthday is also in this time period without going into specifics. 
I'm turning 46. Um, and uh, my friend was like, you know, I was supposed to be the DD and everything, and my friend was like, well, I'd rather drink with my friends than, you know, basically saying that she wanted me to fucking have fun too. Um, although it's perfectly possible to have fun without getting shit-faced. But something in the back of my head is just like, you know, here I am facing a possibility of never having a career in corporate America again as a trucker. Basically having to scrimp by below the poverty line for the rest of my life. Because let's face it, my content creation isn't going to pay the bills. Um, you know, it's just... I'm very black-pilled, and I've definitely hit some all-time lows in depression for the past five years. Um, and I'm just like, what, what are we doing all this for? What's, what's the end game? Where are we going? What's there to look forward to right now? You know, I, I feel like we've already peaked in our lives, and it's all fucked up from here. Yeah, what can you do? Is what it is. And shit. There's still nature though. Still pretty awesome. I like the fall. I do. So there's, I guess that is something. But I'm sure they'll take that away too. Or force so many people out here that it becomes destroyed. It's a possibility as well. It's just, I don't know. But it, uh, an addendum to that, of course, I got almost blackout drunk. And uh, I felt like shit about it. Uh, you know, we're not just talking about the one day physical hangover I had. But mentally, I'm just like, wow. I'm, I'm fucking up, you know. I'm definitely still an alcoholic, still an addict. And, uh, while I'm a firm believer in addiction transfer, uh, some of the things that I transfer to have lost their, I don't know, appeal, fulfillment, as in they don't trigger the dopamine hits that they should, you know, and it could also be the profound lack of dopamine in our environment, or the fact that I don't get enough fucking sunlight, you know. So, there's that. Last night, as in it's been less than 24 hours since I last was inebriated. Granted, a lot less so than the previous time. I only had four drinks instead of uh, the unknown number that I consumed for the birthday celebration. Um, but I still feel bad about it. And I'm still being self-aware and holding myself accountable for kind of failing. And some people might be like, you're being too hard on yourself, you know. It's okay to get fucked up every once in a while. Once again, returning to the rationalization of, uh, you know, how fucking you're not going to live forever and might as well enjoy yourself. You know, same reason my mother has once again quit keto in spite of uh, worrying about being put on insulin. But that's the same argument I heard from her on that. It's, you know, I'm getting old, fuck it. <laughs> you know, but leaving aside all the suffering that can come from that. And that's where, that's kind of why I'm self-aware about it is I know that, you know, I wasn't at my best when I was full-blown raging alcoholic. And I don't want to go back to that. So I'm trying once again to get back on the fucking horse, get back on the fucking wagon. You know, try and uh, be a little bit less black-pilled. But it, it's definitely hard with everything that's going on. and. 
finding things to transfer my addiction to is a, I feel like is slim pickings because I feel like I have to find new things to to really get me going like nature still does it but you have to when you're depressed you have to make yourself do it which is uh, sometimes easier said than done you know I tried to get out here yesterday and although it didn't rain there were clouds in the sky that looked like rain it did eventually rain like it later at night but I was like no and I ended up going to walk around a dead mall instead and contemplate life but I just wanted to come on here and kind of share with you that struggle that I'm currently going through. You know, as triggered as I get, as entertaining as I try to be, this is always going on in the background. So, I'm trying again. It's gonna be rough too because I'm not past my actual birthday yet. So, and uh, I don't know that everyone's fully aware of my birthday aside from my close friends. So you know how that goes, especially if you're at the bar. You know, you might say avoid the bar, but that's kind of where my social life is at this point, along with a few close friends outside of that environment. Which is fine. I, I kind of like having my social life kind of separate from the rest of my life at this point. So. Whew. God, I'm so out of shape. Really let myself go. Hopefully I can get back, bounce back next year. Hopefully I land on my feet with everything that's going on. So. But I just wanted to share that as I walk through the woods. And uh, if that helps anybody else that's in the throes of fuck it <laughs> right now, you know, let's pick ourselves up and try again. And the same will eventually go for keto if I can ever afford it. You know, prices just keep going up and up and up. Can't imagine why that is. So, there seems to be progress. People fighting back, people speaking up. And it does give me hope, but we've got a lot of things to fix before we can get back to worrying about fulfillment in life. Now it's more like keep your head down and survive, uh, which is where I, I'm at. You know, I used to say, oh, I'm going to work to the semi-retirement and jump in and out of the truck and travel and make videos. Meanwhile, uh, they're currently working on making the jab mandatory to get on a plane, train, or bus, which means... I am now a prisoner of the United States and cannot even go so far as Canada, which is literally four hours of driving from here. Even less if I go north. And that's even though, you know, it, I, I just, I don't, I don't get it. And, and people who have the jab are still trying to rationalize it to me. Meanwhile, I'm probably ha having been exposed repeatedly to it by people who have tested positive. Um, slight addendum to when I did get sick. Um, turns out, and I'm letting you know this in all fairness, that the person who infected me was indeed not jabbed, or at least the suspected person that uh, affected, infected me. So there's that but that doesn't change 
the other facts when you look at the CDC data that I presented in my podcast, by the way. You might be like gone right now. What fucking podcast? Well, I released my first radio show. It's paywalled, five bucks an episode. I, some people might find that too steep. I'm sorry. But I like the freedom of it. I like that it's my platform. And I kind of like the audio format. Um, and I've had from those who have uh, purchased it. Thank you, by the way. Um, I have uh, gotten good reviews so far. I haven't had anybody bitch at me about it. You know, from the few that have chosen to purchase it. But I understand. Times are tough. Inflation's up. But it's something I gotta do to cope with uh, rising prices and fuel costs and all that other stupid shit. Um, I need to be able to make money doing this if I'm gonna keep doing it. So... I'm not taking away from your content here on YouTube, so if you don't want to purchase it, you can perfectly stay here and consume the same amount of content that I've been providing on YouTube, which is about one to two videos a week with an occasional live stream. That's, that's what I'll do on YouTube, and I'll continue to do that. But if you wanted more, you sign up for my free email list on scottthetruckdriver.com. Every Monday I will be releasing a two to three hour audio podcast. Um, basically, you know, uh, we're getting to a scenic area. Shit. a whole lot of geese and shit kind of needed that my uh, <clears throat> audio podcast will continue and thank you for those of you there will be a link down below if you're interested in me ranting about current events which quite honestly does contribute to my mental health decline which I am fully aware of at this point but hey maybe it's my only skill I got left is bitching about everything <laughs> since I've uh, apparently abandoned sobriety and fucking keto at this point this is kind of awesome here So, I didn't want to really get too deep into current events on this particular. This is more of a vlog, walk and talk nature shit. So, I'll put out another video uh, maybe later this week if I can muster the willpower to do so. Um, if not, I'll talk about it in my next podcast. Um, and if it's something... I can share a segment on, you know, I, I will try, but keep in mind that those segments will be audio format, so you won't be, like, watching me talk or whatever during those. I'll probably put some B-roll that I shoot or something over it, or maybe just a time lapse of something, I don't know, on repeat as you listen. <laughs> yeah. But I am considering taking segments from my long podcast. Kind of give you a sample of the product, so to speak. Particularly if I find that there was a section that I thought was particularly interesting or entertaining. Um, kind of like, you know, Joe Rogan does when he posts his 
little clips from his podcast on uh, YouTube and shit. Thinking of something along those lines, just to kind of still give you, those of you who can't afford to pay for the podcast, you know, a little bit of content on top of what I normally do anyway. So, but what the fuck do I know? Try and, uh, <laughs> I can't, it's hard for me to give advice right now, you know. Try and keep your chin up, I'm trying. I'm, I really am. And uh, I don't even know if I'm on the fucking trail right now. This is the danger of walking in the fall. You know, try and keep your chin up. I think uh, there's some hard, hard days coming, you know, some, some shitty days. <laughs> Uh, in the near future, especially financially, I feel like we're, you know, we've got a federal government and a Congress that just are completely detached with what's going on on the ground out here. And they want to tax and spend their way through inflation, apparently. And it's like giving a little kid a credit card and sending them into the fucking toy store. How do you think, how long do you think your finances will last if you keep doing that? You know? And, uh, so I, you know, I understand if, uh, people can't support the, the podcast financially, but I'm still going to do it for, you know, there are people that are surviving this that do like the channel and do like my content and it could help me survive during this shitty time that we're approaching. This looks a little bit suspect. It's all warped and shit. Hey, it looks just like the White House in Congress. But what the fuck do I know? I'm not an expert. Just a fucking asshole. And uh, as you can see, I am quite the flawed human being. Even though I try not to be, you know. And I try to carry myself in such a way where I'm not. But deep down, I'm fucking struggling like the rest of is. At least most of is. So. Still gonna, I still believe nature is on my list of things to look forward to though, you know. I do feel slightly better now that I'm out here. All right. Proceed with caution, standing water on boardwalk. I'm guessing their budget is a little bit low. Looks like I am going to make the whole loop. It's only... What time is it? It's only 3 o'clock. They close at 5 and I'm almost halfway around the lake. So assuming I don't dawdle. Should get a nice little hike in. And shit. But yeah, I need to get out in nature more for sure. And it's gonna be harder as winter sets in and gas prices go up, so it'll be harder to head south and uh, get out in nature that way. 
and shit. I do love the fall though. I, I am gonna try this weekend to go to uh, Watkins Glen, see what the colors are like there with the leaves and shit. And then uh, maybe try and do some photography and some video. And So I'll share all of that with you when I do that. So it's a little bit more nature shit for you. Because I know some of you like that, especially those of you who can't get out and do these sorts of things. I kind of like taking you out here with me. You know, as best I can anyway. But that's it for this video. I'll leave you with a little bit of nature for you to, I don't know, if I see shit, I'll film it and I'll put it at the end of this. And uh, have a nice motherfucking day. And fuck Joe Biden. And I hope y'all who voted for him have learned your fucking lesson. <laughs> Literally right when I stopped my video, the, the deer was just standing there. Didn't give a shit. It wasn't until I started moving this way that, the, that it got spooked. That's pretty cool. And shit.
So, I promised you peace in nature. But if I can't fucking have it, neither can you. Um, <laughs> so I'm walking down the trail, right? And there's this couple. Now keep in mind, we've been at this for fucking two years. And most of the places I go, there's no fucking masks. Uh, currently. Because everybody's jabbed. Um, we're, we're outdoors, you see that? You know, it's nature and shit. I'm one motherfucker. I'm definitely more than six feet away. Um, so there's this couple walking down, pushing a baby carriage. None of them had masks on. So this is where we're at today, by the way, in terms of how we view our fellow man. The husband pulls out a mask, coincidentally Democrat colored, it was blue, blue mask. You know, like one of those ones you buy on Amazon from China. You know, where the virus started. Anyways, he pulls his, pulls his fucking mask out and puts it on. It gives me like this scary look, or scared look. I don't know what to call it. Now granted, look at me. You know. I look like one of those freedom-loving, fucking evil, un, unjabbed people. Apparently we have a look now. Meanwhile, I know plenty of people who are liberal that are fucking not jabbed for other reasons. That's what happens when you politicize something like this. Anyways, he gives me this look. Meanwhile, his wife didn't even flinch. She's just like, you know, walking right along. But we'll get into that in another video, I guess. There's more and more information keeps coming out about it that of course people like the guy that just put his mask on despite the fact I could have you know if he's that afraid of me you know I could have infected his wife and child by being in this dangerous environment you know without my mask on um, How do you think that the psychological impact of that is um, when we're doing things that make zero sense? Zero sense. You know, we're outside. If you're more than six feet apart from me, the chances of you getting any of my viral load are minimal. As in, almost non-existent. Especially with the sun beating down on you and shit. But... I can tell that that person watches CNN just by the just by the whole demeanor and the look in his eyes when he did it. You know, it's enough to make you want to fucking drink. <laughs> 